terms of the collection, we've talked about how environment, how use, how the material composition of the objects themselves and expected usable lifetime are ways in which we might think about managing our own collections in the, in the future. Uh, I've written down modeling. I think we've learned an awful lot about the potential of modeling this morning. Um, I think it's, it's, for me, I believe it's the direction and it's the future for collection management. Um, I think it, for the first time, it starts to visualize an awful lot which has been invisible and bring it together in a very dynamic way. Um, again, from a collection management point of view, I think that this is starting to provide the evidence that we need to, and the um, planning horizon that we've all been looking for to be able to put and direct resources more effectively um, and as a way forward in the future. I think that we can underestimate the potential of other disciplines. We've heard about social science and the potential of social science research to bring into our own discipline and our own way of thinking, to broaden our thinking and to see the value of degradation research. And we're really grateful for you to, to be doing that. Um, we've certainly extended the lexicon around this subject. Uh, dose response function, I hope, will become uh, a mainstream vocabulary word that we're all common parlance. Um, we've talked about uh, damage functions. And again, these are just more accurate ways, I think, of describing what we've all done over time. But um, it provides a facility for much better discussion between groups. I'm glad to see that uh, we're moving away from a one-size-fits-all um, perspective. We are moving towards understanding that every collection is different, the way it's used, the mission of the organization we've talked about um, will vary how we manage that collection. I think that's a reflection of a maturity in conservation and preservation, um, that we are to a large extent all different and that the decisions we make have to be rooted in uh, our own institutions. And that takes me on to um, noting that this work certainly aligns with, um, as colleagues over here said, with current environmental management thinking that um, usable life, context of use, um, is, is a trend that, that we can't ignore. And I think it's also important that this could help us deliver some sustainable models for the future, which all of us have talked about, but then this gives us some currency for doing it more precisely. Um, important to remember that demography is just another incremental step in all the tools that we've developed over the last 25, 30 years for um, managing change of collections. And I think you know, we've got a bit better each time. Um, I remember I'm sort of <coughs> colleagues in the room will remember 30 years ago, 25 years ago, talking about surveys and the development of endless discussions about development of collection survey models, um, which served to only capture the condition of a collection at a given point in time. It was as, you know, it was good and it does still help us in many ways, but it doesn't help us really, uh, it doesn't offer that long planning horizon, it doesn't help us to quantify the resource in the way that um, needed to, to manage that change. Um, I know that the British Library and certainly the National Archives and others have looked at life cycle costing as a possible model or a tool for answering some of these questions. And I know from the work that we did at the National Archives that it proved not a helpful tool. Um, <coughs> it's important in terms of research to discount, disregard certain um, opportunities we might have because the interdependencies in a preservation environment are too complex and too, too difficult to come to, to really plug in effectively to a life cycle costing model. Um, we can't ignore the work that we've done on risk assessment thanks to uh, the, you know, key individuals in this room. I think that was a major shift in uh, providing tools and new ways of thinking and it brought in 
um, concepts of probability and how we need to manage risk over time and to think about how we value collections. And I hope both to Steph and Jonathan, you think, hope that we're starting to take the values question and how we value collect, uh, collections and the significance of collections and how we might factor that into our decision-making process in a more effective way. And I don't think that we can ignore any of the Image Permanence Institute's um, work on developing models and mapping degradation um, over time and, and putting resource in at a given time in the life cycle of the collection. Um, I think that what I like about this model is that it starts to think about a future that is around probability, possible use, um, probable use. Uh, we talk a lot about um, forecasting and prediction. Since being involved in this project, I've been reading a lot around uh, what others are thinking around the economy and, and health. We have an awful lot to learn from those disciplines about how they predict and forecast. It's an uncertain science. We have a huge challenge ahead of us. There's a large degree of uncertainty, but we can't ignore that you know, through all of this, you know, the numbers will get, the data collection will improve, our models will improve, but there will always be a degree of judgment involved in how we apply what we hear in the models. I think for me, um, this represents another incremental step in thinking about a tool that helps negotiation. Because for all of us that manage collections, a large part of what we do is about negotiating, it's about talking not just to our users, but up and down across the management structure. And I always find it useful having evidence, particularly visual diagrams, points of reference, the reasons why, what ifs, um, that is just so much more effective in communicating with our pay masters and policy makers than saying, I think I know, um, because often that doesn't uh, provide the evidence that the sophisticated um, minds that we're trying to influence are persuaded by. Um, so I just also want to just make one reference to kind of data that we're collecting and what I've learned through the last few years in being in this project. And there was a moment when I realized that so much of what we've done in managing collections has been about looking at historic data, whether it's past damage, past environmental data, past um, changes over time. And realizing that one of the reasons I have felt hamstrung uh, on certain occasions trying to really articulate how to um, plan for the future and match resource to the requirement is because I'm looking at the past and that sort of lens and filter isn't really what we need. Um, and I think that um, what modeling offers is a vision of the future. It's a way, it's a lens through which it's not absolute, it's not perfect, but it starts us thinking about future planning. And if we're going to meet the challenges ahead of us, um, we need to fix our minds in planning on the future. I think we've been brilliant at the past, but we're not so good yet at looking at planning the future. Um, I just, before we have comments from two colleagues who manage collections in different parts of the world. Um, I find this a very innovative and thought-provoking process, and I think all of us who have been involved with it have provoked each other at times and, and in the most positive way. And I find it quite innovative, and we'd like to hear from you about how you respond to it, because innovation is really about telling a new story. And looking to the future. And I think this is just the start of a, a new story about, about, around managing collections in quite a different way. So I'll stop there.